Hello, welcome to the Stockyard Industrial Lead. I'm Eric Miller and today is going to be another car shop video. We haven't done one of these in a while and it's a special car shop video because I'm kicking off a new series. I'm going to go through all the uh, process of doing an op session and how, how I do it here on the Stockyard Industrial Lead. Now, I haven't done a formal op session here in quite a while and I was planning to pick them up uh, here this fall, but I've decided not to. Um, I, know, I know that people are doing different things with op sessions during this time, um, but I think I feel most comfortable with just uh, still doing things on my own at this this point. And so, but I what I really want to do is run a formal op session. So I'm going to um, do one on my own. And so I just wanted to show you the process that I that I go through. So I'm going to show you what I do before the op session, during the op session, and then after the op session, and all the things in between. Um, so just if anyone's curious and one of the, the main points that I want to make is no matter uh, what stage your layout is in, I think you can have an op session and of course you need to be running trains. Um, that's kind of the key thing, but your layout doesn't have to be complete. It doesn't have to be finished. Now I've been running op sessions for about 10 years. Um, my layout's still not finished. Um, I keep making these uh, changes, um, you know, two or three years ago, whenever I started um, moving into a doing the small switching layout was one of the biggest changes I've ever made. And so um, I'm, I'm, but I was able to hold op sessions and also host uh, the Rocky op, which is uh, something we have here in Colorado where we have um, um, people that travel out to, to see our layouts. And so I posted uh, Rocky op, um, I think three times. I'm trying to remember it's every two years here in the Denver area. And so um, even through all these changes, I've, I'm still able to do that. And so I, I, I think it's important to stress that no matter what uh, stage your layout is in, like I said, as long as you're running trains, you can hold an op session. And so I want to point that out and stress that and, uh, and kind of show you an example of that being my layout. So anyways, the first uh, step uh, before holding an op session is basically, let's say after you've just had an op session and now you're getting ready for the next one, what do you do? Um, and so as, as this car shop series shows, basically I, what I feel is important is to take stuff that happened in the last op session and fix it. And so there might be some things with the track. I, I have my own track project going on that I'm going to wrap up before the next op session. Um, and, but the other thing is I've got some new cars that I've added to my fleet. So I need to deal with those. And then another thing is during the op session, you may have noticed there's some cars that, um, had some issues and and uh, that you've you've basically noted for um, needing some repairs and so sometimes I send them to the rip track during an op session where I can kind of repair them in place and then I'll quickly put them back into the session uh, for the crew other times it's like okay this this is a little bit more of extensive repair and so um, I try to get to those in between the op sessions I think op sessions is a way to encourage modelers and motivate uh, people that hold op sessions to get things done and uh, so that way when you have your next op session you can show off a little bit more of your layout um, you can fix things that didn't work before and so that's what I use op sessions for uh, largely besides just just having fun seeing how it runs and seeing how how people come in and and, uh, and do it because I kind of have in my mind a way that I think it should be run but then the crew, a different crew will come in and and show me some uh, things and uh, oh, I never thought of that before. So that's kind of fun. Um, but it's really a way to motivate me to say, okay, I want to get this done. I want to get this scene finished. I want to finish these freight cars. I want to finish this um, industry, stuff like that. So I, I think it's for me anyways, it's a huge way to motivate myself um, to, to get more stuff done on the layout. So let's go at it. I'll show you um, what I do with my freight cars and how they're um, noted for needing work done, um, what I do with the new cars, and then um, also just just some, some general techniques uh, between the, the op sessions. And again, um, so this is kicking off a new series showing you the process I go through with an op session. Um, I think it's really important to stress that, again, you don't have to have a complete layout in order to hold op sessions and run trains with, the, with friends and stuff. And um, I think it's a huge way to, to motivate to get things done in between. So hope this is a helpful video for you. Hope you enjoy watching it. And let's get into the freight cars. 
Hey, so here we are at the workbench uh, where I do most of the work on my cars, except for, you know, there might be some, like I mentioned during an op session that are more repair in place and easy to fix. Uh, but usually I take them back here to the workbench. And so I've got um, some in different stages of repair right now. So these three cars that we're looking at first, uh, the Golden West and the two SPSFs, these are all new cars that I bought recently, uh, at least since the last time I've operated. And like most new cars, they come with the, uh, plastic uh, knuckle couplers here and so I always um, replace these with uh, metal KD couplers. So one thing that I feel that it's very important for all of us modelers to have are specific standards and these can can vary by modeler and layout. It's, it's totally up to you, whatever you want to do. Uh, now I've kind of adopted these standards as I've operated on other people's layouts and seen what other people do. And so one of my main standards is uh, metal couplers. And so I usually go with the KDs. Um, sometimes cars like a, Walther, a nice Walther's car and Intermountain already have couplers on it. Um, if, as long as they're metal, then that's perfect. Now, what I really like are these uh, KD148s, the whisker couplers, uh, because then you don't need to put in the copper plate there. Um, but I'm almost out of them. And so I actually have a couple of number fives that I need to install. Um, so the other... Uh, what else do I have on my workbench? I've got these cars that were sidelined for defects. Um, the This one uh, was one that uncoupled during one I was recently operating. And so those are, are important to take note. Now what I used to do on my old layout when it was larger is I had a sticky notepad that I would um, hand out as part of my tools for an op session and tell operators that, hey, if there's any any car with a defect, uh, note it on the sticky note, either put it on the car or put it near where the car is. And so that way, in between the op session, I can fix it. Um, so so that's that I found was important and, and helpful. What I do now, since I have such a small op session, is I just tell the crew, hey, if, if a car has a defect, just tell me about it. And then I'll easily remember uh, which one it was and what the defect is. So um, things are a little bit simpler these days. So I'm going to look at these cars. And then the other thing that I have in my workbench are cars that I, new cars that uh, still need some finishing touches, like the Central Vermont car. I've, I bought some new newsprint cars when I decided to add the Bellevue Leader uh, customer back there in Bellevue. And so this one needs some, some details to add, which are always fun. Um, so I need to spend some time on this. I want to at least get it operating. Now this one did come with, with these nice uh, proto metal couplers, um, but I, I want to put, I want to add these details on it. It's, it probably is operational. It's got metal wheel sets and the couplers, but I would like to add the details to it. Eventually it'll need some weathering too. Um, proto max couplers right there. So those are, those are very similar to Katie's. So I'm okay with those. Um, so that one is kind of a, some, sometimes I'll categorize these as like, these are very important. Um, these cars that are that are in the system that I need to get to before I operate. And then these are, are kind of, you know, would, would be nice. And then I've kind of got dreamland over here with the central Vermont car. If I get to it, great. If I don't, that's okay too. Cause I've got a couple other newsprint cars that I'm, that I'm using now that are just fine. Okay. So let me show you how I, um, check the coupler heights and then I'll show you how I replace these couplers real quick. So as I've mentioned, I find it's important to all have our own standards. For the most part, I've adopted the NMRA standards, and uh, that, that includes the weight standards. I, I really like that. So one of the things that I, that I did is I bought these KD um, coupler height gauges. And so I, I like putting two on a little test track here so it's easy to test each one. Now this one comes just barely under the gauge, so it's really not that awful. Uh, but it does warrant, since I, I had an issue with it, and you know I really want everything to be trouble-free on the layout as much as possible because that's a real headache for when you have visiting crews. And if you have too many nightmares out there, too many gremlins, the crews aren't going to want to come back and operate on your layout. So um, I'll go ahead and add some washers. Now, one of the things I did, these are like the standard Athier and Roundhouse uh, bulkhead flat cars, uh, pretty good for operations. One of the things I did was I replaced these uh, wheel sets with 36 inch wheel sets and that that was already a boost to the height uh, but I'm going to go ahead and put a washer in there I've got two different sizes of washers I've got these 
these gray ones over here which are a little bit thicker and then these red ones here um, sometimes you might want to add multiple ones let's put one of these red ones in under each truck and see if that solves it this is pretty simple it's just a matter of taking the each of the trucks off okay so you can see here got the truck off and I'm just gonna put one little red washer right on top there um, put the screw back in there on the truck screw it back in in general I usually screw it in tight and then back it off just a half a turn or so you want it to be nice oh. <clears throat> okay you want it to be nice and fluid but not too wobbly okay that's good i've already replaced the other one so now let's line it up and see if our height matches a little bit better yeah that looks perfect it's hard to see from from your level up there but it's actually coming in right at at height and so i could probably put in another one just to get a, bit, a little bit more of a boost but i think we'll go with this i don't want to overdo it and we'll see how it operates okay so i'm almost done with adding the uh, metal couplers just working on the last one here on this spsf uh, in a roundhouse mdc style box car This has the simple coupler box with screw style, which is usually pretty easy. Okay, make sure it's not getting stuck in there. Put the truck back on. And we'll test the coupler height gauge. Or, yeah, test the coupler height with the coupler height gauge. Now, these two cars were a little bit trickier because they had the... No, they had some... These are Atherin cars as well, but they had some weird configuration with the coupler box. I don't know why it's so hard for manufacturers not just make a simple coupler box with screws in it, but it's beyond me. Okay, so uh, basically those cars are ready to go in service, and we'll test the height on them next. Okay, so now we've got our cars basically ready for our op session. The red SPSF car back here, I did have to add a little... Uh, little washer to each of the trucks to get the height up a little bit but now all these cars are good to go and in service so what i'll do next is i'll put them into my jmri uh, system and just basically add the cars to the roster and then i'll let the uh, computer figure out when they are going to get called out so otherwise i'll just put them in the freight car drawers down below here and they'll be ready to go whenever they are called for service so uh, that's basically it um so that that's kind of what i go through with my freight cars between each operating session um again with the new cars and make sure that you know, they have the standards that that uh, i have set in place for the layout so the metal couplers the weights check out the metal wheel sets and then as i get to it i'll, I'll uh, weather them eventually and then i also as i mentioned i'll get to any defect cars um, that have been um you know no, noted for defects during previous op sessions and also any other projects that i'm trying to finish up uh, kits to to build and things like that that i want to see in the next op session um you, know, you definitely don't want to wait until the day of the op session to do stuff like that so so anyways that's basically for today's car shop that's all i've got uh feel free to ask any questions um, comments anything you want to see in the in future videos uh, the next video I'll plan to show you basically what I go through um, right before each operating session. So the things that I have for the crew to use and um, how the how the JMRI switch list works and that sort of thing. So so the the procedures that I that I use just before the op session. So I'll go through the next video and then we can get to operating. So um, thanks for watching, everybody. Hope this was uh, informative and helpful maybe give you some new ideas even if you've been operating for you know 30 40 years um, might be some good takeaways so uh, again feel free to leave any comments below and i will see you next week